Earlier in the course, you created wireframes for your dedicated mobile app. Now it's time to bring your designs to life using visual design elements and adding more details. And the best way to do that is with a mockup. As a reminder, mockups are static, high fidelity designs used as a representation of a final product. Keep in mind, going from a wireframe to a mockup should not feel like a paint by number exercise. For example, it's okay to place an image in a different part of your mockup design than you plan for in your wireframe. You should build your mockups in the same tool you use to build your wireframes and low fidelity prototype. It's a best practice to place a copy of your digital wires above the area where you plan to create your mockups so you can easily reference them. Mockups include visual and UI elements, so UX designers and their collaborators can get a better idea about the final state of the website or app. Mockups are not clickable or highly interactive, which means they can be used to make multiple iterations without affecting the functionality. Let's explore the differences between wireframes and mockups in a bit more detail. Here's an example from an earlier course when my colleagues were working on the homepage of the dog walker app in Figma. On the left, the wireframes are static images that give us an overview of the page layout and hierarchy. You'll notice that the wireframes outline the content without providing a lot of detail or color. On the right, the mockup of the homepage includes typography, color, and iconography. These elements make it easier to map out the user flow and can help UX designers visualize the user journey in a more dynamic way. As you start creating your own mockups, there are a few visual design elements you'll want to include. The first one is typography. Typography is the practice of arranging text and typefaces, also known as fonts, to make language legible, readable, and visually appealing. Typography can help add hierarchy to your designs, make text easy to read, and add visual style. You'll also use color in your mockups. As you design, think about the messages that certain colors communicate, how people understand color, and how colors mix, match, or contrast with one another. In addition, you'll probably want to include a few icons in your mockups. Iconography refers to the images or symbols associated with a subject or idea. Think about the hamburger icon that's often used for navigation and apps. It's really just three stacked horizontal lines, but most people know that this icon indicates there's a menu you can open up for more navigation options. You also need to think about layouts, which are ways to arrange elements on a page. Layouts usually refer to the specific placement of text, style, icons, and images. The goal of layouts is to present information in a logical way, making the important elements stand out. Without a thoughtful layout, your app designs will be difficult for users to interact with. Finally, keep in mind the visual design principles that you learned about earlier, like emphasis, hierarchy, scale and proportion, and unity and variety. These principles help inform your design decisions. Adhering to them can lead users to have a more positive experience with your mobile app. If any of these terms or concepts are unfamiliar, you can review materials from earlier in the certificate program which are linked in the course readings. Awesome, you're ready to create your own mockups. Remember to share your designs in the discussion forum to get some quick feedback from your peers. Now that you know how to go from wireframes to mockups, it's time to start defining your design system. A lot goes into creating mockups, and you'll need a way to save and reuse the design elements and components you'll use. This is where having a design system can really help. As you might remember, a design system is a series of reusable visual elements that allow teams to design and develop a product quickly and consistently, following predetermined brand standards. At this stage of the design process, one of your goals is to document the decisions you're making about your visual designs. This means documenting the font, colors, layout, text, illustrations, iconography, animation, and other visual elements that your product includes as part of your design system. So why should you use a design system for your current project? When you're designing across devices, having a good design system set up can save you lots of time. If you save your preferences as you go, 
you won't need to make new decisions about a color or style choice each time you adjust your mockup. You can simply copy the element or component you already created and use it again in the new design. Design systems also help keep your designs consistent. And having consistent designs help ensure a uniform user experience across devices and products. For example, you want to use the same style of buttons and the same font in the dedicated mobile app you're designing now and in the responsive website you'll design later. Creating a design system for your project is a little different depending on the tool you're using. If you're designing in Figma, you'll need to create a sticker sheet. And if you're working in Adobe XD, you can use the Assets panel. If you need more information about how to build your design system, you can revisit demonstration videos from earlier in the program. In addition to creating your own small design system, it can be useful to leverage an external organization's design system. For example, downloading a UI kit from Google or any other company can help you get a head start on your designs. You'll have buttons, navigation bars, icons, and more that you can easily customize to meet the needs of your own designs. Awesome. Now it's time for you to create a design system in the tool you're using. Have fun. With your mockups ready to go, it's time to create the high fidelity prototype of your dedicated mobile app. You're getting close to having a final product that can benefit the community you've chosen to serve. Do you remember the steps to create a high fidelity prototype that were introduced earlier in the program? As a quick refresher, they are, one, lay out the mockups in the order of the main user flow. Two, connect the screens or elements within the screens. Three, add interaction details. In both Figma and Adobe XD, the trigger defines what type of interaction will cause the prototype to advance forward. You'll probably stick to interactions like tap for your dedicated mobile app or mouse click for your responsive website later. Four. Adjust the animation. Remember, the animation settings determine how the prototype moves from one screen to the other. Five, complete this process for all of the screens in your dedicated mobile app. So why would you create a high fidelity prototype? Well, the main reason is that hi-fi prototypes give you the opportunity to test your app designs with users. Testing helps you decide how to refine your mockups based on the feedback that users provide. And testing proves whether the potential solution you've been designing addresses the community problem you're trying to solve. All right, that's it for our quick refresher on high fidelity prototypes. Go ahead and turn your mockups into a high fidelity prototype now. I know you can do it. I bet the high fidelity prototype of your dedicated mobile app is coming together nicely. So it's time to put your prototype to the test. You're about to conduct a usability study. As you know by now, a usability study is a technique used to evaluate a product by testing it on users. You've already conducted a usability study to get feedback about your low fidelity prototype of the app. Now you have the option to plan and conduct a usability study to gather feedback about your high fidelity prototype. While the choice is yours, I'd recommend that you conduct a usability study of your high fidelity prototype. If you had a lot of feedback, it made changes to your designs in the low fidelity phase. You might also want to test the visual design of your product to understand whether or not it resonates with the community you've been designing for. And if you aren't already convinced, research shows that usability is key for the success of mobile apps. Common trends among successful mobile phone apps are that users feel they're easy to learn, user-friendly, and make completing tasks quicker. Even though designers agree mobile app usability is important, there's not a single list of guidelines to follow to create a mobile app. Instead, the best way to test the usability of a mobile app is through a usability study. Because you recently conducted a usability study on your low fidelity prototype, I'm just going to quickly remind you of how this process works. First you'll plan the study, which includes seven elements. Second, you'll conduct a study, which could be moderated or unmoderated. Third, you'll analyze and synthesize the observations you collected during the study. Remember, the goal here is to turn your observations into insights. And finally, 
you'll iterate on your designs based on the insights that your research uncovered. If you'd like a refresher on any of these steps, please go back to the earlier course material. Now, before you conduct your study, I'd like to share a few things to consider when conducting usability studies on Hi-Fi prototypes for dedicated mobile apps. These are some insider tips based on my years of experience in the field. First, it's helpful to brainstorm interaction issues that users may have with the product and then test those interactions. Since you've added more complex interactions in your high fidelity prototype, like overlays and motion, you want to make sure they're working correctly. Second, it's important to test your prototype on the correct platform and mobile app screen size. For example, if you designed your app for Apple iOS and its platform specific interactions, don't test it on Android phones or with Android users who may be unable to easily use that platform. In addition, it's important to verify that your app meets all the platform requirements. You don't want to design an experience that's incompatible with its conventions and user expectations. Third, spend some extra time thinking about who your study participants will be. Since you're designing an app focused on social good, you should probably include study participants who are members of the community you're trying to serve. They can give you authentic and direct feedback about whether your designs meet the real needs of the community and if they're able to use your product effectively. Whether you conduct a moderated or unmoderated usability study, be sure to take lots of notes and carefully record feedback from participants. Remember what you've already learned about spreadsheet note-taking and put your skills to the test during this final usability study. So now, you have the chance to plan and conduct your own usability study in order to get feedback about the high fidelity prototype of your app. Keep an open mind and be ready to make changes to your designs. Congratulations on finishing this course from the Google UX Design Certificate. You can access the full experience including job search help and start to earn your certificate by clicking on the icon or the link in the description below. Watch the next video in the course by clicking here and subscribe to our channel for more from upcoming Google career certificates.